So the diminutive yet desirable Google Pixel 5 goes on sale tomorrow for 599 quid, making it by far the most expensive of Google's 2020 Pixel phone lineup. And yet on the flip side, it's still a couple hundred quid cheaper than previous Pixel flagships. So for the same cash as usual, you could buy yourself the most premium Pixel as well as a crate of vodka to see yourself through the impending lockdown slash apocalypse. Now I've had my SIM lovingly slotted inside of the Pixel 5 for the previous week. And here's what I think in my full in-depth Google Pixel 5 review. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, first up, even a full week on, I still get a wonderful bubbly feeling deep in my belly whenever I pluck the Pixel 5 from my pocket. At six inches exactly, it's an absolutely perfect fit for the hand, while still giving you plenty of screen space to work with. Seriously, why or why is every other smartphone these days big enough to be technically classed as a tablet? Small and easy to fondle, that's the way forwards. On the flip side though, I'm already very bored of that just black design, which looks rather plain and unremarkable. It's something you'd expect from a budget phone, except even budget phones these days often have a flare-tastic arse that glitters and shines. And yeah, you can grab the Pixel 5 in sort of sage if you want something a bit more lively, but I'm calling it right now, that colour's probably going to be quite hard to get a hold of, and it stirs up mixed opinions anyway. It's certainly no replacement for the likes of the really blue original Pixel. A big selection of bright and poppy colour choices like those offered by Samsung's S20 Fan Edition would be effing marvellous. Still, when I first unboxed the Pixel 5, I was a little bit unsure about that that weird sort of cardboardy style texture on the back end but to be honest after just a day or two I stopped even noticing it. And that aluminium surface seems very fit for purpose as well. No scratches or scuffs to speak of even after a full week of general abuse and that goes for the Gorilla Glass 6 screen as well. And that's just as well because you don't get a condom case or a pre-installed screen protector here. Meanwhile the IPX8 water resistance means that the Pixel 5 can get pleasantly moist and still continue functioning. Now one of the very best bits of the Pixel smartphones is undoubtedly that fresh stock version of Android 11 with guaranteed updates for three full years. And let's face it, the way everything is going right now, in three years time we'll probably all be enslaved by mutant space crabs and our only form of communication will be scrolling messages to each other on the walls of our underground prisons in our own excrement. And while Android 11 doesn't seem vastly different on the surface, you'll find plenty of lovely little tweaks when you start to use the Pixel 5. Notifications are organised in a smarter fashion which pleases the twitchy OCD part of me immensely, while the update updated media controls make it easier to skip from music to podcasts to audiobooks or to switch your output device. And Google Pay works perfectly on the Pixel 5 and as usual it's just a long press of the power button away, where you can now fast access your most useful Google Home smart devices that way too. In fact during my first week with the Pixel 5 I didn't notice any weird glitchy bugs or any randomness whatsoever in Android 11 which is both deeply surprising and also pleasantly refreshing compared with my experiences with most other smartphones especially those bloody iPhones. Sadly however there is only space for a single SIM card inside of the Pixel 5, there's no dual SIM support, although you do get eSIM support as a form of compensation and there's no micro SD memory card expandability for that 128 gigs of built-in storage. Now sure that 6 inch OLED screen isn't as ridiculously big as many rivals so no it's not quite like having a TV stashed in your pocket but I was happy enough watching movies and shows on the Pixel 5 all day long. Dinky camera orifice aside it's a great viewing experience. That contrast is incredible with super deep blacks and bright crisp whites when you're watching HDR shares on the likes of Netflix. Colours bleed out beautifully and with the option of boost vibrancy if you prefer. And because the screen is that little bit smaller, those Full HD Plus images are sharp as a sushi knife. And unlike the other Google Pixel phones of 2020, you get a proper full on 90Hz refresh rate as well, so swishing your way through Android 11 just feels beautifully smooth. As for the audio, I had no issues with Bluetooth streaming to speakers and headphones, and that's probably just as well because, unlike the other Pixel phones from 2020, there is no bloody headphone jack here. Sound quality was thankfully strong, but seriously Google, what is up with that? The lack of jack has me seriously considering the Pixel 4A 5G as an alternative for pure convenience. And while yes technically you do get a stereo speaker set up here on the Pixel 5, that top speaker packs about as much force as an earthworm's anal blast. Now one of the main reasons that the Pixel 5 is significantly cheaper than last year's Pixel 4 and the other Pixel flagships that came before that is the choice of chipset, namely the Snapdragon 765G rather than Qualcomm's big daddy Snapdragon 865. And yes it's not quite as powerful and not quite as feature packed either, but the 765 
5G is perfectly capable of coping with absolutely everything you throw its way, propped up nicely by the 8 gigs of onboard RAM. And yeah, that comfortably extends to the gaming as well. You can absolutely tear through those pesky school kids on PUBG or Call of Duty, with detail settings bumped all the way up and those spangly graphical effects switched on. There's no stutters, no crap outs, just 100% super fluid violence. Beautiful. Sadly, there's no Wi-Fi 6 support built into the Pixel 5, but I did find that my Wi-Fi connection remains strong and stable at all times. And you do have that built-in 5G connectivity, at least for a bit of future-proofing. And another area where the Pixel 5 impressed me, thank the baby Jesus, was the battery life. You get a cell with just over 4,000 milliamp capacity crammed in here, which seems a little measly compared with most other flagship phones, but my God, is it enough. In the mornings I've found that I've managed to check my messages and stream the best part of an album before that bloody percentage battery counter even starts to tick down. And I've definitely tried to murder the Pixel 5 with extended lunch break Netflix sessions and lots of heavy metal music streaming and all kinds of other shenanigans. And while camera use does tend to burn the battery a bit faster than other activities, I still found that every single evening I was going to bed with a bit of juice left in the Pixel 5. And that is with the 90Hz display mode active, uh, the always on display turned on, all of that good stuff. So very much not like last year's disastrous Pixel 4. Sadly, the 18 watt charging speed is about as impressively quick as the queuing experience in my local post office, but you do at least get full wireless charging support with the Pixel 5, as well as a spot of reverse wireless charging. And then last up for this review, there's that 12.2 megapixel dual pixel camera sensor with optical image stabilization built in. And that's joined here by a 16 megapixel ultra wide angle lens for those funky pullback snaps. It's once again the same setup as found in the Pixel 4a 5G and again here in the Pixel 5 it's so good that it definitely makes my PP go boing boing boing. Like all Pixel phones it's a case of point and shoot and 9 times out of 10 at least you'll get great looking results. Photos are packed with intricate detail in good lighting and even in quite ambient lighting you'll still get bright results with accurate colours. The Pixel 5 boasts a similar dual brightness control for high contrast scenes and this once again works well, while your serious low light shots also look impressively natural once you employ that night sight mode. Basically, the Pixel 5 can nail great looking shots no matter where or when you're trying to shoot them and all with bugger all effort. And that is why the Pixel 5 is still one of the best camera phones around in 2020, especially at this kind of price point. And that ultra wide angle lens is perfectly respectable too, capturing a different viewpoint without balking that natural color reproduction. Likewise, I've got no complaints with the portrait modes. You don't get the same extensive range of filters and controls like you do on other phones, but the results here are usually bang on, at least where crazy hair doesn't ruin the overall effects, and that's even when shooting against quite a bright background. There's still no kind of pro modes here on the Pixel 5 for manually controlling those camera settings, but if all you want is ease of use, just point and shoot, then job done. For your home movies, you can shoot 4K video at either 30 or 60 frames per second, and those visuals are similar to what you get with still image capture. You can expect realistic looking colours and enough sharp detail when you're watching back on a monitor or TV. Audio is picked up loud and clear from all directions as well for an enjoyable viewing experience. And also slapped on the front of the Pixel 5 is an 8 megapixel selfie camera, which may sound a bit crap, but I still found it captured my face in far too much detail. Although damn, do those eyebrows look luscious. Google's portrait mode works as well here as it did for the back end, where you can also make liberal use of that night sight feature, although this usually made me look like a cross between a serial killer and a vampire. And that right there is my review of the Pixel 5, and I definitely enjoyed using it as my full-time smartphone, unlike last year's Pixel 4 flagship. But the question is, even if you're dead set on getting a Pixel smartphone, is there enough packed into the Pixel 5 to warrant an upgrade over the Pixel 4a 5G, or even just the standard Pixel 4a? You've got the wireless charger, and you've got the water resistance and you've got that slick 90 hertz display as well but don't forget you also lose the headphone jack and it is quite a bit more cash so i've got to say as much as i love that faster display i would go with one of the cheaper pixels unless you've just got lots of cash lying around so that's what i think but what do you think It'd be great to hear your thoughts on the pixel 5 and the whole pixel range down in the comments below please do pug subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a lovely rest of the week cheers everyone love you